Continuing on, I want to continue to talk about Eloquent. Eloquent is the database ORM that Laravel uses behind the scenes. Now remember we chose SQLite for our project so far, but Eloquent is able to handle many different drivers of databases and this is what makes it so powerful. You only have to learn one Eloquent and that will give you many database options simply by changing the driver. Continuing on, I want to show you one file that we've been using but we actually have not seen and that is our customer model. If we go into our app directory, there's a customer.php file. And so far, we've actually used this file. Let me show you. Let me go to the customer controller. And right down here, we said new customer. This customer that we newed up, if we look up here, is the app customer. So we actually newed up this file. And you may say, well, how is that even possible? That file literally has nothing in it and that's partially right remember we are extending model and if we click through to model model class is actually what contains all of the functionality that we've been using so far for example we use the all method and there it is and this is the method that we used all right let's not dive too deep into that file this file here is the one that we are interested in so this file is your model this represents a single row of a customer in our customer database. When we ran the PHP artisan make model dash M to make our migration, we made this model file and we made our create customers migration. Now, so far we haven't had any need to touch this file at all, but now I want to touch up on a new concept of Laravel and that is scope. So what is a scope? Imagine a scope as a filter. Right now, we are actually kind of using a scope. When we say customers, give me all of my customers where active equals one, we are scoping down our query by saying only give me those that are active. And then when we do the inverse, we're using another scope. Now Laravel has a very convenient way of declaring a scope. And I'm gonna show you that right now. So if we go back to our app customer model, let's add a new public function here. And the naming convention for a scope is it always starts with scope, all lowercase, and then the name of the scope, starting with one capital case. So the first scope I want to make is an active scope. So capital A, active. So scope active. And the scope active needs to receive our query. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to return query. And then we're going to copy exactly what we had here before. Let's go back to the customer controller and we're simply going to take this logic right here, copy that and bring it over to our customer table. And that's it. So now we can say customers active get, and that is the exact same thing, except now we have a nice named method that we can call instead of just saying where active equals zero and hoping that somebody knows what that means we can use this active column. All right, let's do one more for the inactive customers. So let's add a new public function. Remember, scope, all lowercase, inactive, and that's just a name for it. And we'll accept the query, and then let's return the query again, and let's bring over the same exact code here. So we're gonna grab this where, we'll copy that, paste, and then let's change this to inactive get. So I think this reads much nicer. Active customers equals customers active get. So get me my active customer. Easy enough. Get me my inactive customers. Very simple. All right, let's check this out on the browser. Make sure we're still doing okay. Refresh. And sure enough, we're still getting the exact same thing. So that's a nice, clean little refactor. You can add as many scopes as you need to your project. Just make sure you label them properly. That way it makes sense. One thing you wanna focus on, not only with scope, but with Laravel in general, is that you want your code to read really nicely. When we say something like, get me my active customer, that makes sense. So that's a big focus on Laravel. You want everything to have fluid syntax. 
and everything to flow and read nicely. So we want our active customers, so customers active get, okay, inactive customers, customers inactive get. Very simple, very fluid. All right, with that out of the way, I wanna do one more refactor. Let's scroll down to our store method. We have this request and it validates, and I'm saving it to this data variable but we're actually not even using data variable. And that is because up until this point, I haven't really been able to use it the way that I would normally use it for demonstration purposes. But now that we have this file here, let me go ahead and open them side by side so you can see them. So on the right hand side, I've got my model and on the left hand side, I've got my controller. So now that we know about our model on my controller, I want to refactor all of this code here to not have all of this repetition. We have quite a bit of repetition. We have this name here, and then we have it here, and then we have it here. And then same thing for email, and the same thing for active. So what we can actually do is we can say the following. Customer, customer, and then we can say create. So create me a new customer, and all I have to do is pass in data. Let me show you data here just so you see. I'm gonna die and dump data. Let's go back to the browser. Let's create a dummy customer. We can make them active, that's all right. And there we are. Let me make this a little bigger. So you see here that we have an array that contains our validated data. And this is very powerful because we know that any data that is inside of this array is data that we have specifically validated. Remember, a user can always pop open Chrome and add their own fields. So you never wanna trust what comes from your forms. You always wanna have every single field named and required or at least validated for the correct name. Don't just grab the entire request and put it in your database hoping that the user didn't do any malicious activity. Always assume the worst. So with this validated array, we know that each one of these fields is an actual field. As a matter of fact, I want to show you that because this is such an important concept. Let's go to my customers.blade and I'm going to add a dummy field here. And let's just say email, we're going to call it random. Okay. So this is just a random field that a user could have added on their end. All right. So we've added this field. I just want to show you this concept because it's so important. So let me back up to my form. And now you see that we have this new random field here. So this is a user field. We'll assume that a user opened up Chrome and added this to our HTML and is now going to try to submit this to our server. Okay, let's add customer. But it didn't work. So our array does not contain random. So this is protecting us. This is a very, very important concept about using validated data. Let's just say that I did want that random field. However, I didn't want it to be required. It's an optional field. How do we get that request to give us that field? Well, that's simple enough. We're going to add it here. And instead of writing required, we're just going to leave it blank. So now that field will be included in our array, as I'll show you now, but it's not required. A user can leave it blank. Let's hit save. Let's try that one more time. I'm going to hit back. I'm going to submit one more time. And now we have our random field right here. So it does show up but is not required. Let me delete that field there, hit add customer again, and now random is null, and that's okay. So that's how you would add a field that doesn't really have any validation rules. Something like it's optional, or perhaps is not always there. You can add it to your array in this manner, but just leave the validation rules empty. All right, with that out of the way, now we know that we have our clean data right here, and so, Going back to this, we can say customer, create a new customer using this data. And then we can get rid of all of these lines. As a matter of fact, we don't even need to save this. So we can get rid of that line and then we'll return back. So a much cleaner controller. Now we're going to run into a little bit of an error now, which is going to bring us to our next point. But let's go ahead and test it anyway. Let's go back to our form. I'm going to hit back. We still have our random field. Let me go ahead and get rid of that since that was just for demonstrations. Let's get rid of that. All right, let's try this one more time. Final name, email at email.com. 
active ad customer. And now we get this ad name to fillable properties to allow mass assignment. Continuing on with the security measures that Laravel ships with, there's also two approaches to actually being able to put stuff in your database. You can be explicit about every single field that you will allow mass assignment. And mass assignment is referring to, back in our controller, we are massively assigning all of these fields, right? We're taking this chunk of data and we're just throwing it in the database and not particularly being careful about what we are sending in the way we were in our previous example. Remember when we had customer name equals request name and the same for email and the same for active. That's a very meticulous way of passing data to your database. The way that we've adopted now is called mass assignment. We are taking this array and we're just throwing it in to our database. So there are two solutions for this protection. So the first one is back in our model, and that's app customer. Let's add a protected field called fillable. And fillable is an array. And by default, this array is empty. So in this array, you can specify every field that you will allow mass assignment on. So let's do that now. Let's say name, let's say email, active. So now we specifically said, Laravel, it's okay for us to be mass assigning the name, the email, and the active column. It's okay to do that. Go ahead and accept the request. So let's go back here. I will hit refresh, continue, and there we go. So we were able to add our final name with email at email.com. Now I do want to show you another way and that is that you can basically turn off the protection altogether. When you're starting out, having this fillable as your protection is a good idea. However, if you know you are always going to follow good practices, you can get rid of it altogether. I will comment that line out and I will leave it there. Fillable example. And let's make a new line here. So let's add a new protected guarded. And so guarded is the opposite of fillable. So if we gave guarded an empty array, it means that nothing is guarded. So in this particular instance, if we said name is guarded, then that means that we are not going to allow the name to be mass assigned. But if we just pass in an empty array, it means nothing is guarded. I'm going to add a comment here. We'll say guarded example. And let's try the same form one more time. We have our same file name, that's okay. Add customer, and there we go. So now we have two. So that's working exactly how we expected. So remember, you can go the fillable way, and this means that you are explicitly naming every field that you will allow mass assignment on, or you could go the guarded equals empty array, which is telling Laravel nothing is guarded because the array is empty. So it's going to look at the array and say, is there anything guarded? The array is going to be empty and let us go say, nope, nothing is guarded. Go ahead and mass assign any rows that you want. Personally, I use guarded all the time. I don't ever do the fillable because I know that I will be doing something like this. I will never do something like this where I say request all. I would never do that. So I know that my fields are protected. I am running them through validation first. And then I'm being very careful about what I pass into my create methods. So in my personal case, I always, always use the guarded equals empty array, just so I don't have to worry about that. But just know that that's what the mass assignable error is. So to recap this episode, we mostly worked around this customer model over here. So we added a scope for our active and the naming convention for scope is you write scope and then the name of your scope. So in our case, active. So here they are side by side. This is how you declare it, and this is how you use it. So we're saying, customer, give me all your active rows. And what does active mean? Well, active means that wherever the active column is set to one. And then we do the inverse. Scope inactive, go ahead and give me all of the fields where the active column is set to zero. And so this is how we use it. Customer inactive get. The idea with the scopes is that it gives you a name because where active equals zero today means something to you, but maybe three months down the road, when you come back, you're going to have to parse through your code to figure out what you meant by saying active equals zero. 
If I come back in three months and say customers inactive, I immediately know I am just fetching my inactive customers. And that makes sense. As a second part of this video, we refactor our store method. We are now passing our data variable into our customer using the create method. And this gave us a mass assignment error. And to fix that, we went back to our model and we fixed it in two different ways. The first one is the fillable way where we are explicitly naming the fields that we are allowing mass assignment on. And the second way is simply saying nothing is guarded, disable mass assignment errors. And then we tested everything on the browser. And we're back to where we started, but our code is a little bit cleaner thanks to all of these refactors.